Hello everyone, welcome to today's video on finding the part in percent problems. So we already talked about how to find the percent when we're solving percent problems, and it's going to be looking again at finding the part. Um, we've already seen the percent proportion, part divided by whole is equal to percent divided by 100. And we're going to go about using that, the percent proportion, as well as a variation of that, often called the percent equation today, um, for all of the percent problems that we solve. So let's go ahead and get started. For example one, we have that there's an 8% sales tax in Philadelphia, which is true. Ikenna buys a new book for $10. How much sales tax does he pay? So if he's buying a book for $10, that's like this um, subtotal, the cost of the book itself, but then you have to add sales tax on it, and we're trying to figure out how much sales tax is he gonna pay in addition to the $10. Okay, so let's start with using the percent proportion. For all of these, we're going to need to identify what's the part, well, that's what we're going to solve for in this case. But what's the part, what's the whole, what's the percent, and then we're going to find the missing one. So in this case, the percent is always pretty easy to find because we have a percent symbol. So there's an 8% sales tax, then I'm going to circle in green, and then the cost of the book is $10. That's going to be our whole. And then what we're solving for here, of course, is going to be the part. So how much sales tax he actually pays, that's based on both the percent and the whole. So we're going to end up taking like 8% of that whole to figure out our part. So now I'm going to substitute in the information that I've given in my problem into my percent proportion. Okay, so I'm still trying to find my part. And that's have a whole of 10 in the denominator. And then I have that 8% tax. Okay, so again, this is a proportion, and one way of solving a proportion is with equivalent ratios. So on the right-hand side, I have 8 one-hundredths, and I want to find a ratio that's equivalent to that, um, but has a denominator of 10, right? So in this direction, I'm given everything on the right-hand side of my equal sign, so I'm going to start there and, and move to the left. So I have 100, and I want to think, how do I get from 100 to 10 by either multiplying or dividing? Well, I know that 10 times 10 is equal to 100, so 100 divided by 10 is equal to 10. Okay, so to get from, again, 100 to 10, I'm dividing by 10. So to find my equivalent ratio, then, I'm going to do the same thing to the numerator. So I'm going to do 8 and divide by 10. When I do 8 divided by 10, do that off to the side, 8 divided by 10, remember, I can write that as a fraction. So that's going to be 8 tenths, or in decimal form, that would be 0 0.8, or which also correctly read as 8 tenths. Thus, we have the equivalent ratio, 8 tenths divided by 10 is equal to 8 divided by 100. So that means that my part, 0 0.8, is going to be um, the amount of the sales tax. So in dollar form, that's going to be 80 cents, 0 0.8 or 0 0.80. So that becomes 80 cents. Okay, so that means in this situation, Ikenna is buying a book for $10, and then he's going to have to add 80 cents of sales tax. So even though the question doesn't ask this, um, the final amount that Ikenna is going to pay for the book when he goes to check out is $10.80, because we're adding the cost of the book plus the sales tax. All right, so that's one method of doing it. Now we're going to look at a second method using the percent equation. So the percent equation, um, has its uses. It's often faster, but not necessarily for this problem. So the percent equation is just found by manipulating um, the percent proportion. So if I see here, of course, we have part divided by whole equals percent times 100, divided by 100. If I want to find the part, which is what I'm trying to solve for here, if I think about my algebraic reasoning, right now my part is currently being divided by the whole. If I want to find my part, it's being divided by my whole, I'm going to ask myself, how do you undo dividing by the whole? Just like if it was a number, you undo dividing by the whole by multiplying by the whole. So thus I can multiply both sides by my whole. And then when you do that, on the left-hand side, the holes cancel away. And on the right-hand side, you get percent divided by 100 times the whole. Okay, so this right here is called the percent equation. Um, and it's a... In slightly faster way in a lot of cases when we're trying to find the part um, way of solving percent, percent problems. 
Okay, so let's do the same thing here. We've already identified the parts, so I'm just going to substitute, substitute those in right now. The part part we are trying to find, we have 8%, and then we're multiplying by our whole, which is $10. Okay, so to find the part then, we just have to multiply 8 one hundredths um, times 10. You could either write 8 one hundredths as a decimal, um, that's something that people often do if you're using a calculator, that's going to be 0 0.08. Or in this case, I probably wouldn't do that. I would just multiply. This is like fractions. So I have 8 times 10 in the numerator. That's going to give me 80. And then I have 100 times 1 or 100 in the denominator. So I again get 8 80 one hundredths. Or cancel out those zeros. 8 tenths. Or in decimal form, again, 8 tenths or as we often say, 0 0.8. Okay, so either way, of course, then we're getting that the part is equal to 80 cents. Okay, so now I'm going to have you try. Um, Julio wants to leave a 20% tip at a restaurant. His meal came out $25. How much of a tip should he leave? Okay, so our 20% tip, that's going to be my percent. And then his meal came out to $25. That's equivalent to like the cost of the book. It's like the subtotal. So that again is going to represent our whole. Okay. Um, I am going to let you try either way. So you don't have to do it both ways. But use one of the two methods using either the percent proportion or the percent equation to figure out how much of a tip Julio should leave, which is going to be our part in this case. Okay, go ahead and do that. Okay, awesome, and you should have gotten a $5 tip. Um, so you can see my work here for both methods. So when we use our percent proportion, we have part divided by 25 is equal to 20 divided by 100. So we're trying to figure out what's happening by either multiplying or dividing from getting to from 100 to 25. 25 times 4 is 100, so 100 divided by 4 is 25. So thus, for both the numerator and the denominator to come up with an equivalent um, an equivalent fraction, then we're going to divide both sides by 4. And when we do that, 20 divided by 4 is equal to 5. So we get 5 25ths equals 20 one hundredths. Thus, the part here is going to be $5. And then using the percent equation method, we're substituting in. We have 20 one hundredths times 25. Um, when you multiply across, you get 500 divided by 100, and that is just equal to 5. Okay, so again, this would mean in the situation, Julio is going to end up paying $30, even though that's not the question. Um, you might eventually see questions like that. Um, the meal is $25, then there's a $5 tip, so his final total will be $30. All right, awesome. So in both of these situations, using the percent proportion was pretty easy and straightforward because the denominator, or the whole, was again a um, multiple, was a factor of 100. But that's not always going to be the case, as we'll see in example two, and that might highlight why the percent equation method can be a little bit easier for these questions. So for example two, we have that the Eagles won 56.25% of their 16 games last season. This is true, um, at least in 2020 when I'm making this. How many games did they want, win? So they won 56.25% of their games. How many games did they win? Okay, so again, we're just going to identify um, the information that we're given. So we have our percent, and then how many games total were played. In total, there were 16 games, so that's going to be our whole, and we're trying to find how many they won of those 16, so that's the part. All right, so we'll substitute in that missing information into our proportion. So now we're going to solve our proportion. Like in the last problems, we're going to figure out 100 times or divided by what will give me 16. I would set it up as like 16 times what number is going to be equal to 100. So we can divide both sides by 16, and we're going to figure out that factor. So to find 100 divided by 16, you either have to do long division um, or use a calculator, and you will get 6.25. Okay, so 16 times 6.25 equals 100. So that means 100 divided by 6.25. 
equals 16. Okay, so then we have to do the same thing, of course, to the numerator, and we're gonna have to do off to the side, 56.25 divided by 6.25. And when we do this division, we're gonna get nine. Okay, so we get that nine sixteenths is equal to 56 and 25 hundredths divided by 100. Thus, our part is nine. So that means that in this problem, the Eagles won nine out of their 16 games last season. Not the best, not awful, not good enough to get them into the playoffs. So. All right, and now let's again figure this out using the percent equation method, which I think you'll see is easier, particularly if we're given a calculator. Okay, so we're trying to find our part again. We have our percent is 56.25 divided by 100, and we're multiplying by our whole of 16. Okay, so either, you know, with a calculator or you're doing multiplication on the side, we're going to multiply 56.25 times 16. And when you do that, you're going to get, and when you do that, you're going to get 900. And then we have 900 divided by 100. Again, we're dividing, we can just like cancel off those zeros because um, it's like you're dividing by 10, and that's going to give us, again, 9 or 9 games. So that's a little bit faster because we don't need to find the scale factor of 6.25. All right, but either way, we get that the Eagles won 9 games. And we're going to try one last one, um, actually just using the percent equation now, and we're going to think about it a few different ways. So for example, three, we have that Jennifer's meal came out to $21.42 um, before tax. What is the total price Jennifer pays after a 7% tax is added? And then I've written our two options here. What we can do is we can find the amount of the tax using 7%. And that's going to find, just like we did in problem one, we're going to find the amount of the tax, and then we can add that to the subtotal to figure out the total cost that Jennifer pays here. Just like I mentioned with the finding the total cost of the book there was $10.80. Or what we can do, we can save a little bit of a step, is we can use 107% to find the total paid directly. Briefly, the reason I can do option two is because to find the total amount I'm paying, ultimately I'm adding the tax plus the subtotal, or the cost of the meal or the cost of the book before we add tax. Tax is 7% of the subtotal, and then the subtotal is 100% or all of the subtotal. So when I add those together, then I'm getting 107%. So we're gonna just do it both ways. Again here, um, I'm gonna use only the percent equation, both for timing and just because reasonably, that's what I would do when I solve this problem. Um, it doesn't mean if you like the percent proportion better, you can't do it that way, but I do think it saves a little bit of time this way. Okay, using this method, I'm using 7% as my percent, and then either way, my whole is $21.42. That's the subtotal will be my whole, and I'm trying to figure out um, the tax, the amount of the tax in dollars, so that's going to be my part. So that means we're paying a tax of $1.50. But it's saying what's the total price Jennifer pays after the tax is added. So we're gonna have to, up to the side here, add our subtotal, 21.42, add our tax of 150, we get $22.92. So that is gonna be the total amount that Jennifer pays, both for her meal and for the tax. Okay, so that's method one. Um, the second method, again, was using that 107%, and then we don't have to do that second step where I just did, where I add the subtotal and the tax, because using 107% automatically does that. And here I have 107%. I'm still multiplying by $21.42, so I get $22.92, just like I got from my other method. Great job, everyone.